A person might even die while committing sin. And thus he will meet his creator, he will meet his owner, he will meet the one that created him on the day of resurrection, the way he died. As the hadith collected by Al-Hakim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever dies on something, he will meet Allah in the same state that he died on. Brothers and sisters, this hadith is authentic. Can you imagine a person dying while committing polytheism or kufr or killing someone or while committing adultery or fornication and then you die in that state? And then you get resurrected while committing this evil abomination? Can you think of a person dying while you're not praying? Can you think of a person dying in the month of Ramadan and is not fasting? Can you think of a person dying and he did not perform pilgrimage even though his money has reached the mountain level? Can you believe a person dying while he's drinking alcohol and he dies? Or he's stealing and he dies? Or he's gambling and he dies? Or he's taking drugs and he dies? Or marijuana and he dies? And he'll be resurrected while smoking that marijuana or putting the idol inside him. Because you'll be resurrected the way that you died. Can you believe a person being resurrected when he died being a cuckold? A person who's unfaithful to his wife, meaning he allows her to be flirtatious around men and not care less about his wife. Where she goes, how she goes, how she comes, how she's dressed. How can a person even think to be a cuckold? Can you die a Muslim? A Muslim male? Why are you wearing gold on your hands, on your neck, on your ear? Or shaving? Or taking a river? resurrected the brothers and sisters is the way you die is the way you die one of Satan's tricks is procrastination by which he induces the people to delay their repentance that's why the early scholars would always warn against the saying I will they said I warn you to say I will that is do not say I will repent I will do this. I will do that tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Are you going to live tomorrow? Are we living today? Why say tomorrow? Where are you today? Oh, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. And what makes you, O slave of Allah, think that you will ever live tomorrow? This predecessor mentioned as well, the simplitude of a firm believer how he returns in repentance to Allah Ta'ala from every sin at any time fearing a bad end fearing Allah Ta'ala to the one who is careless in delaying his sin is the similitude of a group of people on a journey they enter the village thus the firm believer straight away he immediately goes and buys that which he needs to continue his journey while the careless one relaxes tomorrow inshallah I'll buy it tomorrow I'll buy my things tomorrow so I can continue it's a lot of time then suddenly the leader of the journey says we are going to depart now the firm believer is ready he's bought his stuff let's go let us go right now I'm ready the careless one please one more day please another hour please 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 what what's this please where have you been all this time? This similitude is likewise for the people of this world. The firm believer, when the angel of death comes suddenly and strikes you, he says, Alhamdulillah, I've been waiting for you all my life. Where have you been? I'm ready to go. His luggage is already locked. 
His luggage of righteousness, his good deeds, is packed up, it's sealed, it's ready to go, depart. He cannot wait to meet his Lord. As for the careless one, Ya Rabb, please return me back to this earth that I may do a good deed in order to please you. That I may do a good deed. He may be. Give me another chance. SubhanAllah. What other chance do you want? You got a chance right now, you are living. Why are you not now filling out that luggage with righteousness, with worship, with acts of obedience? Why do you want another chance after you die? You want to enjoy your life as a lot of Muslims say, Ah, oh, you're too young to go to Hajj. Enjoy it. Buy a house with riba. Buy a car with riba. Get married, get kids. When you get old, white beard if they allow that. White hair, hair loss. Now go to Hajj. Your life is finished. Your life is finished. This is procrastination. We are travelers and no other as Abdullah ibn Umar mentions that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took him by the shoulders. He grabbed his shoulders and said, Live in this world, ya Umar, ya ibn Umar. As a wayfarer, as a stranger, as a traveler. For one day you are going to leave this country. You're going to leave this earth. You are going to leave to your final destination which is no other than paradise or hell. And he used to say, Ibn Umar, always on his tongue, if you live till night, do not expect to live till morning. And if you see the morning, do not expect to see the night. Take advantage from your health for the times that you are afflicted by disease and you are unable to do optional duties and take advantage of your life, of your death for your life. Or of your life for your death. In other words, that. We must right now, with our best of ability, work hard, pull our socks up, prepare ourselves for our destination. We are all travelers. Let us be travelers to the Almighty Lord. What Allah wants, let us prepare that before we get there. Let us prepare that lunchbox. Let us prepare that lunchbox. The lunchbox is righteousness.